Who is Carrie? Chapter 8. Part 1 of Chapter 8. Well, it was the most bothersome thing that had ever happened to me. Knowing just a little bit about who I was and where I'd come from was worse than knowing nothing at all. If you've never seen any strawberry tarts, you wouldn't think much about them one way or another, and it wouldn't bother you that you didn't have any. But if they was in the shops and every time you went by you, you could see them and smell them all hot and sweet through an open window, why, you'd get so you couldn't hardly think of anything else. First, I found out that Jack Erebus was mixed up with me some way. Now it seemed like Dr. William Samuel Johnson was in on it too. But how? Why? It kept coming back to me that maybe Jack Erebus was my father, and I was Dan's sister, even though Mr. Francis said I wasn't. Maybe Jack Erebus had another wife somewheres that he didn't tell nobody about, because you wasn't supposed to have but one wife, but I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure of nothing. Meanwhile, there was rumors about everything. Rumors that the notes was going up and rumors that the notes was going down. Rumors that we was going south and rumors that we was staying in New York. And the rumors was divided into a half dozen smaller rumors about where we was going. One night, we was eating supper with the Mount Vernon servants talking about what it was like in Philadelphia when one of them said, it ain't going to matter to you, Nosey. You ain't going no place anyway. I'll go if Mr. Francis tells me to go. I belong to him. He gave me a long look. Mr. Francis ain't going no place either. What do you mean, I said. He'll go wherever the president goes. No, he won't. The president's getting ready to get another steward. He's going to dismiss Francis. I started to get angry that anybody would say such a thing about Mr. Francis. It ain't true. That's what old Will says. Why would the president want to send Mr. Francis away? Everybody says he sets the best table in the United States. That's the problem, old Will says. He says the president believes Francis is spending too much money. Will says the president don't like extravagance. Will says he watches the money close. He says the president don't see the need for three or four different wines at dinner, nor five or six dishes when two would do. The president, he don't eat but two dishes at a meal himself, and he don't see why anybody needs five or six. Look at dinner today. First soup, then a roasted fish and a boiled one, then a smoked ham and fowl, and no end of dessert, apple pie, pudding that Francis made himself, jelly, ice cream, pecan pie, white cake, brandied peaches, nuts. Why, there was enough food to kill a regiment. The president don't like it. It's a waste, he says. I could see the point. It was a waste. A powerful lot of food come back into the kitchen after dinner every day. Oh, the servants ate it so it didn't spoil and get thrown away, but it was a waste to give all that fancy food to servants who didn't expect but pork and porridge or fish chowder or some such and would have been content with that. Why, they even got leftover wine, sometimes two or three kinds. Of course, the whole idea of dismissing Mr. Francis might just be rumors, too, but it worried me some. If Mr. Francis went back to the tavern, like as not, he'd take me back, too. And then, sure as anything, Captain Ivers would find out and come after me again. Oh, it was worrisome. Midst all the rumors, a week went by, and Dan didn't come with any more news about who I was. I was mighty impatient, but there wasn't nothing I could do about it. There was no way of telling when he would get a chance to skid off from the Junius Brutus. Then, one evening, he came. It was pretty late on a snowy December night. The president and his family usually went to bed at nine and sometimes earlier because they got up by five o'clock or before. The cooks was gone, too, and Mr. Francis had just left to go back to the tavern. I was about ready to go to bed myself when the kitchen door opened and Dan came in, the wind and snow swirling in the open door behind him. He was snow all over and cold, and he come right to the fire and stood there warming himself. <clears throat> Do 
Did you find out anything from Dr. Johnson about me, Dan? I'm sorry, Carrie, he said. I know how fired up you are to find out who you are, but I don't know anything more. I just come from seeing him about my notes, and I asked him about you. He said it was true that he'd drawn up some papers for my daddy. He remembered doing it, but he couldn't remember anything about them. It was years ago, he said. He couldn't remember that far back. Oh, I said. It was mighty disappointing. Don't be too sad, Carrie, Dan said. Dr. Johnson, he said when he had a chance, he'd look through his papers and see if there was anything about you in them. When, Dan, when? Dan shook his head. He's mighty busy, Carrie. You know he's president of the college and also a senator in the new Congress. I don't know when he'll have the chance.